This video is part one of chapter 10.1, the language of hypothesis testing. Make sure you have your chapter 10.1 note sheets available so you can take some notes. So we'll go ahead and get started. Let's imagine uh, this situation. A friend of yours wants to play a simple coins flipping game. If the coin comes up heads, you win. If it comes up tails, your friend wins. Here's what happens. You flip the coin one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, and it always comes up tails. So you start to get suspicious, and you think, is your friend cheating? How can we determine this? If he's your friend, you're probably not assuming he's cheating. However, this uh, occurrence of five consecutive tails could be something unusual. So how would we determine that? If we flip a coin five times and you do it a hundred different times, how often would we expect to get five tails? Let's go ahead and do the math. This is a question way back from chapter five question. So if we flip a coin five times, how many times do you expect it to be tails? Well, that's basically the probability of five tails is a consecutive sequence of events. So that would just be one half times one half to the power of five. And if you calculate that the probability of getting five tails in a row would be 0 0.03125 or about 3.1% um, of the time. And if we did this a hundred times, we would expect this to happen. We expect, expected value, expect five tails about three times. So then that leads us to the possible conclusions. Your friend is not cheating. So that's one of the conclusions. Your friend is not cheating. It happens to be very lucky all right, to get five tails in a row, because that only happens 3% of the time. And if you did it 100 times, it would only happen three times. Or your friend is cheating. And so at the heart of hypothesis testing is this idea that you observe some sample situation. And then you use that sample data to kind of test your claims or hypotheses about something. So the heart of hypothesis testing is we make... Uh, we make an uh, assumption, make an assumption, I could also say claim, all these words here, or hypothesis about reality, and then look at sample data to determine whether it contradicts our assumption. And so that's at the heart of hypothesis testing, that's what we're going to be doing. And actually we've been doing that every time we've asked yourself that question, um, is this event unusual? Whenever we ask you that question, that's really what we're what we're trying to get at is uh, some uh, is a, if assumption or some claim or hypothesis is true. And so that's what we're really getting at. And so let's take a look at some of the formal language of hypothesis testing. First, let's go ahead and define what is a hypothesis, at least in terms of statistics. A hypothesis is a statement regarding a characteristic of one or more populations. Examples of these hypotheses or claims um, regarding a characteristic of a single population, 62% of American adults volunteered for charity work, right? And then a researcher could say, I believe that percentage is different today, and that then would lead to some hypothesis testing, testing the hypothesis that 62% of Americans volunteer for char charity work. Another example of that, according to a study published in March 20, 2016, the mean length of a phone call is 3.25 minutes. The researcher believes the mean length has increased since then. Again, so, so there's a hypothesis about what we think is true, and then um, we could then look at sample data to check to see um, what we um, believe, what um, what conclusions we can make about that hypothesis. Um, something to keep in mind as we develop our uh, hypothesis testing is that 
if the population data is available. There's no need for inferential statistics, or in this case, there is no need for uh, what we're going to call hypothesis testing. If you have all the, if you have the population data, then there is no need to do test or hypothesis. You just use the data for your conclusion. And so that leads to that term right there, hypothesis testing. Is the procedure we're going to be using based on sample evidence and probability used to test statements regarding the characteristics of one or more of the populations. And so we'll go look at an example. Here are the steps of hypothesis testing. Take a look. So the first thing you do is you, we make a statement regarding the nature of the population of interest. Um, and that could be about a proportion of the population or what the average length or average value of something of the population is. We collect evidence, which is the sample data, to test that statement. And then we analyze the data to assess the plausibility of that statement. So those are the three generic steps of hypothesis testing. And so one of the first steps is you make in a statement, state the definition of null hypothesis. So this is going to be the first part of any hypothesis test, is this idea of testing what's called the null hypothesis. And it would be an H with a little zero, sub-zero, is a statement to be tested. The null hypothesis is a statement to be tested. The null hypothesis is a statement of, of um, no change. There's different ways to think about it. Um, status quo. No difference. There's a lot of different ways we can... Um, no difference. I'm going to throw another one in there. We could say no effect. No hypothesis is a statement of no change or status quo, no difference, no effect, and is assumed to be true until evidence indicates otherwise. The null hypothesis, there's that notation, is a hypothesis which the researcher tries to disprove, reject, or nullify. And so that's what we're trying to do. Um, there's also another term that we use. It's called the alternative hypothesis. And it's denoted, meaning how do we write that? You see H1 many times. You'll see that notation to stand for the null hypothesis. Um, if you're looking at other resources, sometimes you will see this is also what we would call alternative h sub a alternative it all depends on the book you're looking at or resource alternative hypothesis